Jia Liang. Jia Liang. Jia Liang. Jia Liang. Dad, are you awake? Uh, Jiang Li, are you? Didn't I... Huh? What are these? How does it feel to come back to life? Do you feel strange or different in any way? If so, could you describe it to me in detail? Dr. Baishu, I... I thought that I was going to... <laughs> Die? You did indeed. As things stand now, you're more akin to a zombie than a human. I'm a zombie? That's right. Before we set off, I asked Chi-Chi to prepare an elixir of immortality. With its help, you have been suspended in the space between life and death. Of course, this is but a crude imitation of an adeptus art. I don't expect it to extend your life indefinitely. Whether it will keep you alive for a few days, a few months, or a few years, I'm as interested as you to find out. But, however long you have left, I believe it should be more than sufficient time for you to say your final goodbyes before departing the world in peace. I hope that Director Hu finds this arrangement to be a satisfactory one. An elixir of immortality? How'd you cook that up? Ugh. Leave it to you to work on something like that behind my back. It's a work in progress that hardly lives up to its name, and it would have had no effect were it not for Jia Liang's iron will. In the end, I am merely a doctor. I understand very little of the great principles governing life and death and the perpetual cycle of yin and yang. All I know is that if I'm presented with a life that deserves to be saved, I will do everything in my power to save them. And even this would have counted for nothing without Director Hu's assistance. After all, did you not tell Jia Liang to show us the way before we set off for Qingsa Village? Oops, and I'm busted. Without Director Hu nudging things in the right direction, we may not have found Jiang Li in time. No wonder he didn't mention the elixir back then. I thought he was being frank and transparent with me for once, but apparently not. <clears throat> Director Hu told me to keep her suggestion a secret, but it seems nothing escapes Dr. Baiju's attention. <laughs> Never underestimate a serpent's sense of smell. <sighs> All I wanted was to help Jia Liang find his missing wife as soon as possible, so that he could be on his way to the afterlife without any unfulfilled wishes making the journey more difficult than it needs to be. Leave it to Boo Boo Pharmacy to snatch the perfect opportunity right out of my hands at the last hurdle. Never mind. I'll just have to put it down in the books as a deferred consideration. One Chi-Chi was enough of a conundrum. The last thing I need is another one. If I'd known this was coming, I'd have whisked him off to the Wangsheng funeral parlor the moment I found him. You stay away from my dad! When I grow up, I'm gonna become an even better doctor than Mom and Baiju, and cure Dad for good! <sighs> oh, is that right? Well, you wouldn't be the first person who's tried to put Wangsheng Funeral Parlor out of business. If you're serious about it, you'll have your work cut out for you. Traveler, Paimon, I'll catch you all another time. Oh, is she finally gone? All's well that ends well. If you ask Paimon, we should probably do something to celebrate this hard-earned family reunion. <laughs> At times like this, a grand celebratory feast is in order. <laughs> it feels like it was a whole lifetime ago when I last talked with Jiang Li and Ayu around the dinner table.
Wait up! I'll come too! Baiju, thank you so, so much for everything you've done for us. Don't mention it, Jiangli. I was just doing my duty. Just your duty, huh? <sighs> Baiju, Changsheng, would you mind if we took this conversation outside? Mind the side effects. The doctor will see you now. Mind the side effects. I've taken a look at your elixir of immortality. It's not altogether dissimilar from the poison I concocted in terms of the way it functions. I have to say, Jiangli, it was a stroke of genius to use poison to maintain life. I hope you're not too upset at me for copying your methods. No, not at all. With your intellect, even if you'd never seen my poison, I believe you would have eventually arrived at the same approach. But I'm still impressed by how quickly you managed to gain such a thorough understanding of it. Jia Liang's still only been in your care for a few days. Not just that, you even managed to improve upon the original formula. That cannot be explained by intellect alone. Baiju, be honest with me. Did you try out some of the poison on yourself? Huh. Told you the truth would surface sooner or later. Life Force isn't the only thing that Changsheng's contract lets you transfer between bodies, is it? Nothing gets past you, Jiangli. You are correct. Besides life force, Changsheng's secret art also allows for the transfer of toxins and diseases. When I treated Jia Liang for the second time, I transferred some of the poison from his body into my own. Not only did this allow me to alleviate the burden on him, but it also gave me an opportunity to study its properties. There is no need to worry about any long-term consequences to my health, however. Now that the source has been destroyed, any remaining poison in me will have already dissipated. But you took such a huge risk. If we hadn't destroyed the gods' remains back there, then even you might have... <sighs> what am I saying? I'm in no position to criticize you for this. The reason I left our master and went into hiding all those years ago was that he was getting old. And I didn't want him using up any more of his own life force to treat my husband. But in the end, how were my methods any different? I risked one life to save another. And then you tried the poison on yourself, too. <sighs> it looks like both of us have ended up going the same way as our master before us. Are all disciples of Chen Yu Vale destined to turn out this way? To live a short life? haven't given away our own for the sake of others. To fight relentlessly against the natural course of life and death, whatever the cost. <sighs> Maybe our fate is sealed the moment we decide to study medicine. We are doctors, Jiangli. We ought never say that anyone's fate is sealed. Baiju, 
I can tell that, over the years, you've used the contract with Changsheng to transfer many diseases and toxins to yourself. There are so many that some of them I don't even recognize. Can you still stop before it's too late? I think you know the answer, Jiang Li. Every one of us from Chen Yu Vale believes in the same thing. Hi! Food's ready! Mom, come and join us! The Traveler taught me a load of new recipes, and said even Dad'll be able to taste them. Come and try them out! Yes, darling. Mom will be there in just a second. Hey, slow down! Daiju, I know I won't be able to convince you, but please don't forget that if one day you're not around anymore. Chi-Chi, Gui, and all the friends who have grown fond of you, they will all miss you dearly. There's no need to worry, Jiang Li. I know what I'm doing. <sighs> I can only hope so. Hmm. Baiju, what did Jiang Li mean by not around anymore? Are you gonna be okay? Every single mortal I've ever contracted with, including Baiju and Jiang Li's master, has passed away at a young age. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. You said that the contract with you helps people live longer! <sighs> it is a very long story. Long ago, when plagues ravaged the land, one doctor made a pledge to rid the world of pain and suffering. But even the most ingenious mortal medicine could not stay the tide of disease. And after working tirelessly for many years, even his dearest loved ones fell sick and bade their final farewell. Legends told of an herb lord in Chen Yu Vale who could cure any illness known to mankind. The doctor sought the herb lord, but found only a white snake, its breathing weak and its power all but spent. Sign this contract and let our lives be joined. Then I will impart to you the secret art of healing. But be warned, this art will harm your own health. With means beyond human ken, the doctor could now reverse the process of death. And yet, the time still came to say goodbye. Only now, the one departing was the doctor, his life force spent. His final act in life was to pass on the contract to his final patient, his favorite disciple. The disciple chose to dedicate their life to saving the lives of others. And generation upon generation followed in these footsteps. <coughs> Since I inherited this contract, I've always respected the path taken by my predecessors and followed it myself unquestioningly. That is, until I tried to use the art to save my own disciples, beloved. She begged me not to use up my own life force. She said that this art is a poison chalice, an evil and unnatural practice. She did not wish to sacrifice one life for the sake of another, when both were lives she treasured. Only then did it occur to me. Did I not suffer when my master passed away, just as patients' families do at their loved one's deathbed? Are not the lives cut short by this contract just as worthy of saving as any patience? What is this contract to us? Medicine 
or poison. Alas, I no longer have enough time left to find the answer. I entrust to your care both Changsheng and this final question. May you find a remedy for this conundrum, which has ailed us so. Time and again, no matter how much I try to warn them or balance their chi, I can never save them. And you? What's your answer? If I abandoned the contract and left you without a host, what would happen? Hmm. I suppose I'd spend my final moments taking a nice nap on Mount Yaojin. Then I'd be reunited with my old friends and your predecessors. Then it's decided. If there's a life in front of me that deserves to be saved, why shouldn't I do everything within my power to save it? <sighs> Once again, it's the same answer. So be it. Close your eyes. Who knows how many more people will take on this contract? None. This contract will end with me. My contract has strict requirements on the host's natural temperament. All my hosts have been most pure of heart. But when one with an altruistic nature gains access to this art, they are more seduced than the average person by the miracle of overturning the laws of life and death. Though they know better than anyone else the fate that awaits them, when faced with the sorrows of humanity and the pain of losing their nearest and dearest, they cannot help but reach beyond human means. They are like moths that throw themselves into the flame seeking a glimmer of hope in a dark world filled with pain and suffering. So, Baihu, does that mean...? <laughs> I suppose that would make me a moth that yearns for the light, but doesn't want to be burned to a crisp. Chengsheng's art can transfer pain and suffering between people, but it cannot reduce the total amount of pain in the world. It's just like we witnessed. Either Jia Liang feared for Jiang Li's life, or Jiang Li grieved over Jia Liang's sacrifice. I have nothing but the utmost respect for my predecessors, who sacrificed their lives for their principles. But I do not wish to join their ranks, nor do I wish to pass on this contract to anyone else in the future. Huh? But didn't you already transfer a ton of diseases onto yourself? What makes a poison, poison? And what makes a disease, a disease? When it comes down to it, are not both mechanisms that affect the operations of the human body? If disease is defined as deviation from normal functioning, then who knows? Perhaps the true elixir of immortality could in fact be a kind of poison. Many may view the notion of searching for immortality in poisons and illnesses as a flagrant violation of the natural order. But to me, it is no different from the way our ancestors tested the medicinal qualities of herbs by sampling each and every one. I don't want those who come after me to lose their lives to this contract. Nor do I wish for Chengsheng to perish from losing her host. This leaves only one solution, doesn't it? Precisely. I will be Changsheng's final host, and the tradition of passing down the contract will end with me. Even the gods of old struggle to achieve true immortality. First you want to save others, then you want to save yourself. Now you even want to save me. You're getting greedy, Baiju. Hmm... But isn't wanting to have it all what makes us human? For a selfish moth like me, who's afraid of the flame yet yearns for the light, the only path forward is up towards the moon. Huh. For once, Paimon just does not know what to say. Dr. Baiju, Traveler, what are you still chatting about? The food's about to get cold. 
We also have coconut milk for Changsheng and Paimon. Um... Okay, fine. Let's go grab some food. Paimon has a bunch of burning questions, but they can wait till after we've eaten. I do envy Paimon sometimes. Eating her fill is enough to satisfy her body and mind. <laughs> True. And yet, although we call them simple pleasures, are such things as these not precisely why we mortals cling desperately to the life we have? Schedule. Huh. Next on the agenda. Only when it snows like this would I prefer to be at home than in a bookstore. Where there is a well-stocked fireplace at home, while there is no fire allowed in bookstores. Body and mind. Ready for a rehearsal? Ah! Ah! 
Ages. Time for takeoff. Behind schedule. Here we go. Adventure time. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Chivalry will never... Rain outlines your fate. Witness the power of Gugwa. Access denied. Thank you for coming. Here's Becca! Everybody stand back! Have fun with this gift! Wretch it, Vermin! Fire it up!
Teamwork is trick! Support and fire! Gears of the storm! Yeah. Unsightly insects! Swarm Fury! Too slow. Everybody stand back! I got you covered! Ah, truth repeats its point! Watch it, Furman! Behold!
Still so many places. Adventure time. Trust you. All expenses paid. Let's light it up. Light it up! 
Crystal Frost. Power that ended Punch John. It's hard to remain on dry land for so long. I could never quite seem to get my land legs back. moment to compose myself. Gliding me back. I'm going in. Born of icy frost. Time for takeoff. Let's light it up. Yeah. Access denied. Everybody stand back! All hail! 
can get away? Yahoo! Let's light it up! Next on the agenda, 